Hi guys, today we're going to do something similar um, to what we did in the previous tutorial. We had Far Cry 4 loading screen, um, which is that one, similar to the um, Far Cry 4's loading screen in the game. Um, we use that for um, resource loading or emulated resource loading. So we're going to do something very similar except for the uh, model view controller pattern. So the essence of that pattern is basically to isolate a model from view and from the controller. So you'll have like view as in a um, user interface um, completely different from the model as in like model doesn't know anything about the view. Controller does um, controller knows a little bit, but is mostly used to control different elements um, of the view. And there is a sort of built-in um, way of how to do MVC um, in JavaFX um, using FXML. So um, this is the previous or code source code from the previous um, tutorial. And this is the source code for this tutorial. As you can see, it is very short because all of the UI code is isolated in a an FXML file. So if we run this, slightly different. Um, I'm trying to give you sort of different ways of doing sim um, same thing, so you could employ different um, elements in your FX games. So this is the loading bar, and this is sort of loading. Um, rectangle or circle. Um, I call it circle last tutorial, so I'll just keep calling circle as well. Um, so yeah, if you do uh, the imports now, um, it'd be easier. So um, again, we extend the application as always. We have our main uh, method to launch the application. And then um, we have certain new things like um, FXML annotation for um, loading circle animation and progress bar. These are loaded from the FXML file which is um, here. So this is um, uh, called UI.FXML and this is where you store your user interface uh, sort of definition of your application. It is very similar to XML and HTML, so if you've uh, experienced any of those, then it'll be straightforward. So we'll probably start from, uh, yeah, I think it'll be easier to start from here. So in order to load your um, UI from the FXML file, you first um, create an instance of XML loader or call a static method load but because we don't have controller class and I'm trying to keep um, things very simple so we assign a controller ourselves and this class or this instance of this class is going to be our controller get class get resource um, allows you to obtain resource if the file is in the same um, folder or in the same directory. So ensure that these two files are in the same folder before um, you do this so that it works. So it loads the um, FXML file, uh, then we set our controller and then we load the root element or basically the root of the scene which will contain everything already in there. So every, all of that will be parsed automatically um, by FXML loader. So all you need to do is simply attach the root node to your scene and then set the scene, um, uh, set the new cre newly created scene to your primary stage and show the stage. So all of that is basically um, has nothing to do with this. So in a typical application, you'll only have this or even um, without these parts because if you have a class called controller then you can assign your controller within the FXML file. 
Now onto the um, file itself. So this is the um, declaration of an XML file. Um, so just copy all of this. Um, these imports are like um, Java imports. So pretty much the same. Um, it has a lot more because I typically copy and paste um, across many um, FXML files so that um, I have access to many of the classes. Otherwise, you might encounter an unexpected error saying certain type that you want to use is an invalid or something. So all you do is basically surround your um, Java imports with um, Angular bracket and then um, question mark. And there is no semicolon. So this is the definition of our user interface. This is the root node and it is pane. So if we go back to the previous tutorial, um, it is pretty much one to one mapping. So we create pane, we create pane here, we set preferred size, application width and height. We have defined um, uh, well, yeah, uh, we set preferred width to 800 and 600, and then we'll use this to um, refer to the um, application width and height um, down here. This is XML namespace, and it will always be the same, so just copy and paste this um, to your other FXML files if you want to create new ones. Here we create a rectangle um, for our background, so it's going to be a um, rectangle with width and height of the application with color black, which is a um, default. And the same thing we do here. So FX ID is um, used to identify a particular um, element within the scene graph or within the XM, uh, FXML file. Defines are like um, normal Java definitions or declarations. So um, this is pretty much what we do, or how we do it in um, FXML file. Um, then, well, I've removed the um, lines because we're now using built-in um, progress bar. So if we now go to the application itself. Um, loading circle or loading rectangle is this element or um, this node. We set translate x um, to um, background width minus 120. So when you put, um, when you use the dollar sign or symbol, you're referring to something that you have already defined, like an FX ID. Um, right here. In here, however, you have um, curly braces, which uh, identifies the expression. So it means for the parser that you're about to use an expression. And the expression is, we obtain the width of the background um, of the or element BG, which is our rectangle. We defined our ID here and we um, get our width from that. And this width just happens to be equal to the application width. And 120, so we put our top x, y coordinate um, here, somewhere. Translate y, um, exactly the same, background height minus 150. We then set width of this particular rectangle um, to 40 and height to 40. Um, fill is the color within the rectangle and we can set it to null or transparent so it's um, basically see-through completely. Uh, stroke is the color of the borders of the rectangle so um, white and stroke width is the width of um, the border so two by default it's one we then um, create our progress bar. Uh, we set ID um, effects ID to progress bar, and then we can uh, map this element to um, a Java uh, field 
here. If you uh, put fxml annotation over the element, you can assign or um, if it matches the fx ID, uh, the name of your field, then fxml loader will automatically assign um, the correct value, correct object. We translate x um, to 100, translate y background height minus 70, so we put it right here. Preferred width is 600, which is um, the width of our progress bar. Progress is zero, so it will set the progress um, that um, loading bar within the progress um, to zero. Style is um, FX accent is basically the color to what um, you want, uh, what color you want the progress bar to be. So let's say um, red or do green. Zero two five five zero. So RGB is red, green, and blue. And the maximum value is 255, minimum is 0. So that should um, give us a um, green lo loading bar. Uh, yep, so now the um, animation is our rotate transition. And we do this by um, using a define, uh, define tag again. Anything in between the defined tags is not part of the scene graph. So you can um, create your references here and then reuse them later if you want to. Again, it is rotate transition, effects ID loading, circle animation. Um, it has to be exactly the same as the name of the field so that um, FXML can match them. By angle is minus 360, so it rotates counterclockwise. The node which to animate is the loading circle. Again we use the dollar sign to refer um, to the object itself and loading circle we have defined here so um, they have to match obviously. Duration is the time to do full um, 360 degrees which is 2.5 seconds. It has to be S uh, because of the parsing system. It could, it could be ms for milliseconds or ns for nanoseconds. Um, cycle count is how many times to uh, perform this animation and we said animation fx constant indefinite. What that means is that in the class animation there is a constant there is a constant um, called indefinite and we use this to set to cycle count. So these are basically all properties. Not everything can be set within the FXML file, but all properties can be. So basically whenever you have set something, like um, set stroke, you remove the set part and you use um, lowercase letters, so like this. So set stroke to white. In FXML it will look like just stroke um, is assigned a value of white. So this is like an attribute and this is like um, a value or um, property I think it's called in um, HTML or property and value something like that. So yeah you have also interpreter so if you if we go back to where we defined our animation in the previous tutorial it's exactly like that. We rotate transition duration is 2.5 seconds. We animate um, this node here, but we animate um, this node um, in FXML. Cycle count is animation effects constant indefinite. Um, interpolator is linear. Again, it finds the class called interpolator. Um, then it can find the class because we include um, all of these statements or import them. Then it searches for the constant called linear, and if we do, um, if we go to animate interpolate class, so this is the class interpolator, and there is a static constant um, linear or static final, and well, yeah, that's it for the FXML file. So.
these were, will be initi um, initialized by um, the fxml loader when you call load uh, we said we create new scene with this root which will contain all these elements already um, then we um, bind the progress property of the progress bar to the task property if you remember this task is the background task for um, resource loading or we emulate resource loading by just making the thread sleep for a random amount of uh, milliseconds and we simply update progress in the previous tutorial what we did was um, just before the end of this method we called um, print line resource loaded and what we're doing now is simply overriding the succeeded method um, so that this will be called when this method completes normally and what we do is just stop the um, loading circle animation so it does this currently and when it finishes it calls this and the animation stops um, this is it for this tutorial um, if you want to look at some more complex things then just let me know um, there are some interesting projects available currently and yeah stay tuned for next tutorials and thanks for watching